So let's move on with the Talent Summit. Uh, and we'll have the opportunity to hear from Inter-American Development Bank President Mauricio Clave Carone on the power of talent during these pandemic times. So let's go over to him now for his insights. Hi, my name is Mauricio Clave Carone and I'm the president of the Inter-American Development Bank. Thank you for this opportunity to speak about some of our priorities in this space. At the IDB Group, we're constantly engaging with like-minded partners from around the world with the purpose of improving lives in Latin America and the Caribbean. This year, the global community has come together to tackle some of the greatest challenges humanity has faced in a generation. The pandemic has overturned everything. Every aspect of our life has been drastically transformed by innovation this year, from health and education to ag tech, fintech, and industry 4.0. The engine behind this revolution is human talent. None of this would be possible without the qualified human capital that can turn ideas into a reality. Investing in children, youth, and the workforce through nutrition, healthcare, quality education, jobs, and skills helps develop human capital. And this is key to ending extreme poverty and creating more inclusive societies. For our world to overcome the global pandemic, we must invest massively in our people, in reskilling and upskilling, in an inclusive way that will touch all groups of societies in all countries. Let me tell you why it's urgent to invest in human capital in Latin America and the Caribbean, and especially why we need to do it with a gender lens. In Latin America and the Caribbean, more than 25 million jobs have been recently lost. Most of these lost jobs are from people in the informal economy, with no social security, pension, or safety net. But we also lost 3.5 million jobs in the formal economy, 7.7% of the total employment. And these are the types of jobs that are the most difficult to recover after an economic crisis. And unlike in other crises, in this one, women are the most affected. Some economists are even calling it the she-session or the she-recession because of its disproportionate impact on women. This crisis has three important features that particularly affect the female labor market. First, it increases at-home activities such as full-time caretaking and education, which fall mainly on women. This affects not only the ability for women to participate in the workforce, but also the possibilities of future career advancement. Women with a low education level in particular are spending more time than men on housework and are caring more for others. In Uruguay, for example, the gender gap for unpaid work has jumped from 80% to 110% during the pandemic. Second, the unemployment crisis disproportionately affects different sectors of the economy. Data from Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, and Mexico indicate that job losses were mostly concentrated in sectors with high female employability, such as services, commerce, and tourism. As a result, women are losing their jobs at a much greater rate than men. The unemployment rate in Latin America and the Caribbean in 2017 was 10.4% for women compared to 7.6% for men. Today, average unemployment among women in the region has soared to 15.2%. Third, social distancing measures led many individuals and companies to opt for teleworking, which depends on ICT technologies. Before the pandemic, there were already significant lags in the use of technologies by women. Before the pandemic, women in the region already had a labor participation rate of only 52.3% compared to 77% for men. They also had a lower quality of access to benefits of formalized labor. They suffered from lower wages and they had less access to leadership positions. The effects of the pandemics are exacerbating these gender gaps. These are discouraging developments. But I also think the crisis gives us a historic chance to make radical changes that can enable women to become an engine for growth. The key is avoiding the backsliding to the pre-pandemic baseline. Instead, we should see this as a moment to rethink and reconfigure labor markets to reduce the inequalities of the past. At the IDB Group, we're pursuing this opportunity through four lines of action. First, we're helping to build a better digital infrastructure. In our region, nearly 250 million people do not have access to broadband, and for those that do, it's expensive and of low quality. This means that millions can enjoy the benefits of teleworking, telemedicine, financial services, e-learning, or online shopping from the safety of their homes. The IDB is developing an innovative tool that uses data science to locate unmet demand for connectivity. The goal is to help the public sector to design better policies and for the private sector to undertake more efficient, profitable, and high-impact investments. IDB Invest, our private sector lending arm, is co-founding Intranet for All, a company to take internet to the remote areas of Peru. An IDB lab, our innovation laboratory, is investing in startups like Argentina's Satellogic, a global leader in deploying satellite imagery-based solutions in agriculture, forestry, natural disaster response, and energy infrastructure. Second, we're supporting upskilling and reskilling programs at a larger scale. Our particular focus is on training programs that allow women and the unemployed to access jobs opportunities at high-value sectors. 
Programs that we support are focused on digital literacy, sector-specific skills, and the green economy, in order to name a few. We think that education platforms that bundle nano degrees, skill certification, and job placement support offer a great opportunity to bring more women to sectors that pay well and that have good career development paths. For instance, Costa Rica has been successful in attracting knowledge-intensive companies such as Amazon, IBM, Hewlett-Packard, and Procter & Gamble, among others. But they also face the challenge of growing unemployment and the difficulty of directing the unemployed into growth sectors and occupations. To address this problem, IDB Lab and CINDE, the Costa Rican Investment Promotion Agency, have convened a public-private partnership to develop an educational platform that uses artificial intelligence and data analysis to advise and the company people identifying their skill gaps and opportunities for reskilling and upskilling as well as the demands of trends in the labor market. For example, during the pandemic, Cinde launched a pilot experiment with Coursera to create 50 learning routes to jobs in knowledge-intensive sectors benefiting 50,000 people. Third, we're prioritizing women-owned startups, along with small, medium-sized businesses. A small, medium-sized business owned by a woman in Latin America and the Caribbean produces an average of 10% greater income than one owned by a man, yet they have 50% less access to credit financing. Makes no sense. To support women entrepreneurs, IDB Lab created WeExchange, a platform that connects women STEMpreneurs in the region with mentors and investors. This year in the annual forum, 12 finalists out of almost 900 applicants from 31 countries pitched their companies to a jury of venture capital funds and to IDB Lab, and most of them will receive financing. Another example is the Women Entrepreneurs Finance Initiative, approved in October of this year to promote the growth and resilience of women-led and owned small, medium-sized enterprises. This $17.5 million program will benefit almost 5,000 women-led small, medium-sized enterprises in Central America, Guyana, and Ecuador. Additionally, nearly 225,000 women and women-led small, medium-sized enterprises are expected to directly benefit, indirectly benefit, I should say. Finally, we're promoting multi-stakeholder partnerships that generate quality jobs and economic opportunities for women and encourage their participation. One example is the Gender Parity Initiative, a public-private partnership the IDB and the World Economic Forum have launched to tackle the gender gap in Argentina, Chile, Panama, Colombia, and Peru. Underlying all these efforts is our fundamental belief that Latin America and the Caribbean can be a source of talent for the entire world. We see the evidence every single day. Consider the example of three coding boot camps that IDB Lab has been supporting. Programa Valentina in Guatemala, Reprograma in Brazil, and Laboratoria which has operations in Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Chile, and Brazil, are preparing hundreds and soon thousands of young, unemployed, indigenous, black, transgender women to build a thriving and diverse tech industry in the Americas and beyond. These three social startups, all co-founded and led by women, are revolutionizing a very traditional technical training sector, targeting women with no previous programming knowledge and working closely with the tech industry to focus on the skill sets that are market-driven. Through these training programs, in less than six months, vulnerable young women can become junior software developers, an occupation that's highly sought after by companies in the region, and after all, that are well paid. These are the kinds of women-led enterprises that fill us with hope and enthusiasm for the future. But they also remind us of the urgent need for much larger investments in our region's talent. For this recovery to have staying power, it will need to unleash our richest resource, the creativity, grit, and resourcefulness of our people and more specifically, of Latin American and Caribbean women. So I congratulate you for choosing this visionary topic for today's session, and I thank you again for inviting me to participate. You can be sure that IDB Group will be a passionate and ambitious promoter of this agenda in the years ahead. Thank you so much uh, for those insights. And, and yes, it really shows the passion, definitely shows there. That was the president of the Inter-American Development Bank, Maurizio Cleve, Garone, uh, talking about, in particular, the power of talent in the COVID-19 era through the gender lens. And he spoke uh, at length there about the sorts of initiatives that will benefit women in particular uh, in the region over there in terms of upskilling, for example, making sure that AI systems can be leveraged to identify where women in communities lack certain skills and help them get onto courses through various partnerships that enable upskilling and learning of new skills. And since there is a focus on knowledge-based companies there as well, making sure that that education 
infrastructure is also there. One of the things that stood out towards the end there of the presentation was around coding, the idea of coding boot camps for young women and those, again, wanting to upskill and improve their offering in the job market. But it was uh, quite a sobering figure to know that when it comes to women and startups uh, in the jurisdiction for the bank, 10% greater income is made uh, by startups that are run by women than those run by men. However, these women get access to 50% less when it comes to financing. So that is obviously something that is in complete imbalance and he would like to address it. He talked about a $17.5 million program in Central America, Guyana and Ecuador uh, to push SMEs, which are led by women. So even though this pandemic has negatively impacted some of the, uh, the situation for women in particular, there is hope, there is this idea that many of these public-private partnerships can be used to improve the situation. So partnership very much coming out as an option when it comes to achieving gender parity. Some great insights there, uh, which were really interesting.